If you're planning a visit to Rocky Mountain National Park and are looking for easy but yet beautiful hikes, which are perfect for the entire family, including small children, then this video is for you. I've spent over 20 years here writing about and photographing this national park. My wife and I also raised a child here and spent lots of time with him out in the mountains. So let me share with you five beautiful and easy hikes that you won't want to miss. The first hike on my list is Sprague Lake. Sprague Lake is located about six and a half miles down Bear Lake Road. It's actually one of the only artificial lakes in the national park. In 1914, Abner and Alberta Sprague built a large lodge here to house visitors just before the national park opened. Then they dammed up the stream to create what is now known as Sprague Lake. They chose this location due to its dramatic views of the Continental Divide. Now, while the lodge is no longer here, the lake remains. It has a flat, wheelchair-accessible trail all the way around the lake. It's a one-mile loop with opportunities to see trout swimming in the inlet, duck, geese, and occasionally you'll see moose or even elk out in the lake. It's actually quite a shallow lake. This is also a very popular place for fly fishing. However, the real star of the show is the amazing view looking across at the mountains from its eastern shore. This view is always stunning, but at sunrise, when there are clouds over the mountains, but none over the eastern horizon, then you're in for an amazing show of beauty. Now, if you can't make it for sunrise, then at least try and visit during the morning, as this is when Sprague Lake and much of Rocky Mountain National Park looks its very best. Now, the second hike you need to check out is the Alluvial Fan in the Endo Valley. This is located just three miles up the road from the Fall River entrance, although you can also get there quite easily from the Beaver Meadows entrance. The alluvial fan is an area that has seen a great deal of change, not only over the millennia like the rest of the park, but even over the last 40 years. In 1982, a dam about six miles upstream broke, sending a torrent of water down the Roaring River, carving out a deep channel and greatly altering the landscape. Now, if you look at this area from above, you'll see that the way that this debris spreads out is in the shape of a fan. This is where its name comes from. Then in 2013, we were hit with an intense rainstorm that destroyed the roads in and out of Estes Park and caused large landslides throughout the area. This storm also had a huge impact on the alluvial fan area, washing out the trails, bridges, and the road. The storm also changed the location of the stream as it carved out a new path. Now this area was quite a mess for a long while, but in 2020, a new trail was built. This new trail is less than half a mile long and most of it is wheelchair accessible. Now what makes this trail special and worth a visit is that it gets you up close with the water. Here you can enjoy the cascades coming down from high above and relax by the stream. It's actually a favorite location for kids as there are lots of boulders to climb on and there are often pools of water to play in. During the spring and early summer, you're gonna to wanna to keep your kids and yourself away from the mainstream as it can be very powerful with all the melting snow. But later in the summer, the stream calms down and becomes a great place to play and soak one's feet. This area is especially delightful on those hot summer days. Now the third location you need to add to your list of places to hike is Adams Falls. This is located on the west side of Rocky Mountain National Park, just one and a half miles east of the town of Grand Lake. This hike will lead you through stands of aspen and pine to reach a beautiful waterfall. There's a nice overlook where you'll be up above the falls looking down at them. You can watch as the stream divides around an island and then plummets down with a loud roar and spray of water, especially during the spring and early summer. The kids really enjoy this spot and often want to stay. It's just a short one third of a mile hike up to the falls. Now, when you finish, if you have energy, I recommend that you keep following the trail upward alongside the stream. In another third of a mile, you'll arrive at a big open meadow with a gorgeous view of Mount Craig, known by the locals as Mount Baldy. East Meadow is so peaceful and relaxing that you might want to stay a while. Here, you can often spot moose grazing in the meadow, as well as large birds and other wildlife, so be sure and bring your binoculars. When you're done with the meadow, you can turn around to return to the parking lot, make it a nice one mile hike, or you can continue along this gentle trail for another mile as it skirts the side of the large marshy meadow.
Now this next hike you don't want to miss. It is the Tundra Communities Trail located at Rock Cut on Trail Ridge Road. It starts at 12,110 feet above sea level. For this reason, you want to be sure that you've had a couple of days to acclimate to the elevation before you head up here. But even after that, you may still find that this gentle walk will take your breath away, literally. This trail allows you to experience one of the most special things about Rocky Mountain National Park, its alpine tundra. One third of Rocky Mountain National Park is located above the elevation that trees can grow. Yet a different type of plant life thrives in this harsh environment. This paved half mile trail will lead you through stunning views into the alpine world. During late June and early July, you'll find wildflowers growing all along the trail. And if you're lucky, you may even be able to spot herds of elk grazing in the tundra or possibly spot bighorn sheep. On the way up, there are many educational signs giving you an opportunity to learn all about this unique environment. The trail heads towards a large pile of boulders. This is where the trail ends. However, if you're nimble, you can scramble up to the top of the rocks where you'll find a special memorial dedicated to former Rocky Mountain National Park Superintendent Roger Toll. This memorial is actually a type of map that shows the mountains and other locations that can be seen from this spot. It's fun to try and find each of these places and learn their names. Well, here are a couple of things to keep in mind when hiking this particular trail. As I've already mentioned, be sure that you have acclimated to the elevation before you do this one. Secondly, please stay off of the delicate vegetation as it's nothing like the grass you have back home. It can't survive more than a few footsteps. And lastly, try to hike this trail in the morning. It's not only more beautiful, but it's also safer. During the summer afternoons, we often have violent electrical storms that move through, and at this elevation, you may be a target for lightning. Later in the evening is also another good time to do this hike. Just keep an eye on the weather. Now, when you get back to the parking area, be sure to walk across to the other side of the road. There you can enjoy views of the gorge lakes on the other side of the valley. See how many of the nine lakes you can spot from here. And then be sure to look over the stone wall. Down at the bottom, you'll often be able to see marmots, pika, and other creatures going about life in these rocks. Now, our fifth and final hike is Lily Lake. It is located just six miles south of Estes Park on Highway 7. Here you'll find a gentle one mile wheelchair accessible stroll around a beautiful mountain lake. It has stunning views in every direction. Looking to the south, you can see the tallest mountain in the park, Long's Peak. On the east side, Twin Sisters Peaks towers over the lake. And to the north, you'll find a large hill with jagged rocks jutting out of the top, making for a stunning backdrop. Now, as you walk around the lake, Keep your eyes open as you can often see muskrats swimming through the water or relaxing on the shore. The boardwalk on the south side is also a great place for spotting a wide variety of birds. Just stand there and listen to the amazing music they make. Occasionally, you may even see moose grazing in or around the lake. Now this hike is especially wonderful at sunrise as Long's Peak glows with the first light of the morning. But it's really good in the evening as well when the crowds have left, leaving the lake so quiet and peaceful. This is somewhere that my wife and I will often go to walk on summer evenings. Now, if you have more energy, there is also an upper trail on the north end of the lake that begins just before the small bridge on the northeast corner. However, on the upper trail, there are quite a few stairs and the trail can be a little hard to follow, but the views from above are wonderful. Now, there are many other short and wonderful hikes to be enjoyed in the park. But these are some that you definitely don't want to miss. To learn about other easy hikes in Rocky Mountain National Park, check out my book, Hiking Rocky Mountain National Park, The Essential Guide. In it, I give you everything you need to know for 75 of the best hikes in Rocky. Now, one of the unique things about my hiking guide is that I list the hikes from easiest to hardest to help you quickly find all the hikes that are within your group's difficulty level. It's all color coded as well to help make it easy to find exactly what you're looking for. Well, I hope you have an absolutely amazing visit to Rocky Mountain National Park. While you're here, be sure to stop by my gallery in downtown Estes Park and say hello. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching. To help you prepare for your visit to Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, rockymountainnationalpark.com. For hiking guides, calendars, coffee table books, and more, 
visit rockytrailpress.com. And when you arrive, be sure and stop by my gallery in downtown Estes Park. It's called Images of RMNP.